Is it another swim? Right. Ready? All right. Welcome, everybody. My name is Marcus Flurl. I run Solaris Core Technology at Oracle. And uh, yeah, I just flew in on a red eye this morning. So uh, hopefully, everything I say is actually coherent. So apologies if uh, there's a few gaps in my sentences. Um, so I'm here today um, to talk about what Oracle is doing around OpenStack, and specifically what we're doing uh, in the Solaris space. Um, this actually works. Yeah, so from a big picture perspective, there's a number of Oracle products. We made an announcement last December. Um, we're making large investments around OpenStack on a number of different, a number of different areas. Um, certainly on the Nova side with Solaris and uh, as well as with OVM, uh, we're investing very heavily there. We also we're making Neutron work. We're making, uh, providing Neutron plugins for our networking products. And we've made some significant investments around storage, where we're also making all of our storage products available um, through, OpenStack, um, through OpenStack. And then, of course, there's a lot of investment, us being Oracle, there are a lot of applications uh, that we have to offer, platform, databases, middleware, and so on. There's a lot of investment going on in this space also, where we're looking at providing database as a service, providing platform as a service in the context of OpenStack. So we made a big announcement uh, last week, uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, in New York. A uh, new version of Solaris 11 came out, Solaris 11.2. Um, and with Solaris 11.2 now, we have a complete distribution of OpenStack fully available as part of base Solaris. So it's not a separate distribution that you have to sign up for, that you have to buy separately. It's, part, it's fully integrated, fully bundled as part of Solaris 11.2. And as part of that, that means you have all the major services available. You can use those, certainly, to manage your Solaris-based environment. But you can also use that to manage any other hypervisor. And of course, it interoperates with all the storage and all the networking products out there. Our plan is to contribute all of the changes that we're making back to the community. Uh, we've already made the changes available publicly, and we're just working with uh, the OpenStack Foundation, figuring out how we're actually going to push this back upstream as much as possible. We do want to have a separate distribution, a separate uh, deviation from, from the main OpenStack train. We want as much as possible push things back upstream and be closely aligned with the rest of the community. And then also, as of this morning, uh, you probably heard about the new marketplace that was announced. Solaris 11.2 is also part of that. So when you go to the new marketplace, uh, you get our distribution and, and our, our capabilities available as well. So at a very high level, and I apologize for this slide, this is the 200,000 foot marketing slide here. Um, what we try and achieve is what probably most other people tell you. We want to be efficient. We want to be secure and compliant. But we also want to make it very, very simple. We want to be open, of course, with OpenStack. And overall, we want to be cheaper and more affordable than other people that are out in this space, actually. So how do we do that? So in very simple terms, this is the way we think about OpenStack. This is the way we think about Solaris today. We think of it as a completely integrated solution. It's not just an operating system like you traditionally used to, but it's a combination of the operating system, the virtualization, the software-defined networking around it, and then OpenStack fully integrated with that as well. And in fact, what happened as we were, that means from, from a development perspective, when you think of Solaris, you think of it as the traditional properties of security, availability, all these traditional properties. We are bringing these tra traditional properties of a, of a very solid server operating system together with all the capabilities that are required in a cloud environment. So that means all the cloud management through OpenStack, but it also includes uh, things like the uh, application-driven SDN. And I will talk about that in a little while. So it's really a combination of those traditional enterprise properties and the modern cloud properties all integrated into a single individual product, all supported by one team, um, very tightly integrated, yet open and interoperable with other hypervisors, with other operating systems out there, interoperable with other network and storage devices. And so from a Solaris side, OpenStack really helped drive a lot of the requirements. So by bringing OpenStack into Solaris, rather than adding on new capabilities on top and putting a lot of complexity into OpenStack, we took OpenStack, and OpenStack for us was driving a bunch of new requirements where we said, under the covers, we have to simplify the way networking is being set up. We have to simplify the way we do image deployments and things like that. So as much as possible, we try to put a very, very solid foundation in place that then simplifies the actual deployment through OpenStack. That's been our overall philosophy, our overall design parameter. 
And so there's new virtualization that we introduced as part of 11.2. There's new deployment capabilities. We have new elastic virtual switching and VXLAN capabilities. All of this was driven by OpenStack. A lot of this was driven by OpenStack. And so from a deployment perspective, just to give you some example here uh, in the limited time, um, from a deployment perspective, we introduced a new deployment mechanism called Unified Archives. What Unified Archives allows us to do, it means that we can, we Oracle, we take our Oracle applications, the critical Oracle applications, we package them up, we make them available, customers can download those, and Unified Archives, the reason why we call them Unified is because at deploy time, you can switch between virtualized and physical. That's a decision you make at deploy time. So you can take the Oracle database, you can take the Oracle middleware, and you can then deploy it either as a zone or a container. You can deploy it as a, as a full-fledged hyper, a full-fledged uh, uh, guest, or you can also deploy it as, as, a, as a physical image. And all of that is just coming from a single image that we make available. Of course, the image is highly optimized. It's optimized, all the tuning has been done so that in order to streamline the overall process. But we're not limited to that. All the tools that we are using to package up these Oracle applications, we also make available to you. So you can take one of these unified archives that we ship, and you can customize it further. You can also take your in-house application. You can take your third-party application. And you can package it up as a unified archive, load it up in the glance, and provide secure and compliant provisioning all the way from your production. And you can push this out into a very large-scale environment. In addition to that, we also have a bunch of security features that we introduced where you can also lock down the root file system of both the guest as well as the hypervisor. That means you start off with an image and you push it out, it's fully locked down. The only way to unlock it is you have to go back and you have to have a separate login in order to unlock the image. So even if somebody manages to break into your environment, um, they, still have, they still can't do much. It's all locked down. They have to also crack the other uh, login in order to make any changes to your root file system. And so these are the kind of things that we've been investing in very heavily in order to not just allow you to rapidly deploy things, but also give you the compliance and the security technologies around it in order to do this in a very secure and enterprise grass grade way. We're also using the same technology. We're using Unified Archives as a way to deploy OpenStack itself. So we have a Unified Archive for all of the components of OpenStack, Glance, Cinder, Neutron. All of the drivers are packaged up as part of a unified archive. And then you can just download that. And within a few minutes of configuration, you should be up and running with your, with your cloud environment. So not only do we use this or for Glance for the actual images that you can deploy for the applications, but you can also use this for the basic infrastructure. On the virtualization side, uh, we've made another big investment. We've had containers now for over 10 years as part of Solaris. And we now also made full-fledged hypervisor capabilities available as part of Solaris, and both for x86 as well as for Spark. So that means, again, you can take um, a service, and you can decide you want to put it in a container and take advantage of the fact that there's only one OS to manage, very low memory overhead, most efficient virtualization, or you can deploy it as a traditional guest OS, all using the same command line interface, all using the same infrastructure. And again, on top of that, we've been working heavily on a lot of, of REST APIs. And we're using those same REST APIs, for instance, for the Oracle, uh, for, the, for the OpenStack infrastructure to go and, and create these virtual images. And this is what it looks like. Oftentimes, you talk to customers, they think of virtualization. I either have to do bare metal or I have to do virtualization. What we've done, we've completely streamlined our virtualization, which means both from an I.O. perspective as well as from an overall uh, overhead perspective, for a lot of applications, both with zones as well as with kernel zones, there would be next to no virtualization overhead. And that's a big difference. You don't have to worry about, OK, here's my virtualized environment. This is where I'm agile and flexible. And over here, I have my, my physical environment. That's where I get the performance and all these other parameters. You don't have to compromise. We brought these two things together. You get the flexibility, the agility that you expect from cloud, but you also get the performance that you need the performance that you would expect from a, virtual, from a physical environment. Uh, one other thing that has been driven by OpenStack has been what we call application-driven SLAs. And what this really means is that you know, we have an underlying virtualization infrastructure with virtual switching and VLAN cap VLAN VXLAN capabilities. 
Um, but we also integrate this very tightly with the rest of the Oracle stack, which means that you know, for Java, for instance, the resource management capabilities are exposed through Java. As you create a new Java service, that automatically propagates SLAs down into the virtualization layer, into the network virtualization, all the way into your other VMs or into your storage. It's that deep integration. And again, this was something where rather than adding on a whole bunch of complexity, we decided to build this in into natively into Solaris as a, as a guest operating system. One of the big advantages that we're seeing is you know, we, we have Cinder and Swift both working on top of um, CFS. And we're seeing a lot of interest from customers who want to take advantage of all the compression, deduplication, all the copy and write, all the capabilities of CFS, and then exposing that through Swift. That's a very, very common use case as well. And then again, as I mentioned earlier, it's not just about running our own infrastructure through that. Um, you can take our OpenStack, and of course, it's compatible with all the major hypervisors out there. That means you have our OpenStack environment, our controllers, our horizon. You can manage your, your, your KVM instances. You can manage ESX, and vice versa. You can take other people's horizon, and you can manage Oracle Solaris through that. But we don't stop there. So what I've been talking about now has been about the deep integration between the operating system, the virtualization, the, uh, the uh, elastic virtual switch, all the network virtualization, and then integrating this tightly with OpenStack. But of course, being part of Oracle, We've also done a lot of deep integration across the entire stack. And this starts as simple as making the Oracle stack, making key Oracle applications available through, through unified archives, through prepackaged images. Um, but it's also it's not just about that. It's really about, you know, from a design perspective, as we design the next generation of the Oracle database, the next generation of our middleware, the next generation of Java, integrating this tightly with Solaris, with the operating system. And that means from a, from a uh, Designed from a, from a CPU perspective, min, uh, minimizing the overhead there. That means um, doing a bunch of optimizations in order, to, in order to minimize the memory footprint. It also means things like optimizing the observability. How can I go in and how can I, get, as quickly as possible, debug my entire stack? And then, of course, it's all the way down into support. So, as an example, this is an example, this is a demo that we have live now for the Oracle database um, where you can go into the Oracle database debugger. And it automatically calls into the DTrace libraries in Solaris in order to minimize the time it takes you to, to uh, debug a problem. So in other words, you have a performance problem. You go into your Oracle database debugger. And that will automatically call into our DTrace library and tell you whether you have an IO outlier or any other kind of issues. It will automatically provide you that information. And there's a whole bunch of additional investments that we're making in this space in order to streamline that even further. Yeah, so with that. Again, to summarize what we've done here, we've taken Solaris as a traditional operating system, and we've really built it into a full-fledged cloud platform. And that means it's the operating system, it's the virtualization, it's the networking around it, and it's deeply integrated with all the, with all the OpenStack parameters, OpenStack uh, controllers, and it's also deeply integrated with the rest of the OpenStack, with the rest of the Oracle stack. Thank you very much. And, uh, just one last thing. We have a booth right there at the entrance. If you're interested in more details on this, uh, this was just meant to provide you a high-level overview. I have a number of people here from my team. They'll be happy to answer all your questions. Thank you very much. <laughs>